Hello everybody and welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. We did a lot of Justice League on this couch over the last month or two. Yeah, so let's have a break. No, we're gonna keep doing Justice League. More Justice League. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because there's a lot of Marvel stuff coming through the pipe and we're covering those things. And so, figured, you know what, let's just get a lot of DC. Yeah, let's balance it out. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Preemptively balance it. Front load it with a bunch of DC <laughs> so that no one's like, Hey, you Marvel fanboys! I mean, they will be like that. They will be like that. It's like, yeah, there's a Black Widow movie, what am I gonna do? What, what, well, yeah, I'm gonna do the Demon Etrigan instead of Black Widow. Like, what's wrong with you? Anyway, this is Justice League The Sixth Dimension from Scott Snyder and Jorge Jimenez. This is, again, part of the road to death metal. Oh no. Yes. No, How many no. roads led to death metal? <laughs> it was a it's year really of DC publishing at least. So uh, every book at DC for a year was heading towards that. Everything Scott Snyder wrote from Dark Knight's Metal to death metal was leading to death metal. But I wanted to cover this one because this is awesome and it absolutely should have been just where death metal was going. Oh. Because oh. it's so delightful. Well, on the cover, there's a giant Batman gripping the Justice League. Yeah, yeah. so that's pretty dope. Metaphorically, that happens, more or less. But literally, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> literally, though. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's very evocative of uh, Tower of Babel. The idea of, like, the League is crushed or destroyed by Batman! Yeah, internally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when Snyder picked up Justice League, he wanted to do a few things, or at least he indicated such. <laughs> and uh, one of the things he wanted to do was he wanted to kind of, like, bring out the league that everyone's familiar with, which was the league from the animated series. We covered the first volume called The Totality. Mm -hmm. That was when like a thing, a doorknob fell out of the fucking sky, it had a logo on it, and they built the Hall of Justice to look like it. Oh yeah. And like, there's a thing, and it's like an arc, and that's that means justice, and, and the there's inverse. a lower one, and that means doom. Oh. And Lex Luthor saw a vision of himself, and you know, he's been jerking off to it ever since. And uh, so he's all about Doom and all about Perpetua, and he like used the totality, you know, rescued Perpetua because the Source Wall got broken. Right. And that's what was behind the Source Wall. It was How Perpetua. disappointing. Yeah. And the idea is that to Perpetua is part of like the old gods that like created the multiverse and all the things that may all all of her race that makes multiverses. Uh, what they do is when they do it, they die, and then their energy goes into the multiverse, and it creates life, and you know it, it re it, it re-energizes the universe so that like more can be created. Perpetua is like, nah, fuck dying, it sucks, <laughs> and so she created something that was like dark and you know doom oriented, and as such, she was punished for her crimes, and she was imprisoned behind the source wall, and that's the idea. And uh, in order to stop death metal, and in order to stop Dark Knight's metal from happening, or in order to succeed at the end of Dark Knight's Metal, uh, the consequence was the destruction of the Source Wall and the freeing of Perpetua. So, but she was like, the freeing of Perpetua to let her die? No, she was, because you can't, like, they, it's weird. Like, if all the gods are supposed to die and release their energies, why do they imprison her? Why didn't they just murder her? Yeah. And then just release what? her energies. Well, maybe like, by imprisoning her, you eventually kept her alive. She's like, fine, keep me in prison. Right. This is what I wanted. She I want to be safe. I mean, what's funny is she didn't want that. She wanted to, like, be active and stuff. Like, you could see there's actually a flashback in this book where, like, she is in prison and she's like, no! So she clearly doesn't want to do that. Right. Well, maybe you can't kill them. They, they can only commit suicide right. by creating life. Yes, there they, you go. Like, yeah, it has maybe. to be their choice. Yeah, the only yeah, thing that maybe. can kill them is by actually, like, doing their purpose. Yeah. Eh, that's fair. Maybe. I'm sure Snyder would agree with you. But that's where we are. And it's like, oh. Right. Because, so, like, when I was watching Justice League, none of that shit happened. There's one episode, which is a delightful two-parter where they go back and forward in time, where they see the hand that creates the multiverse. Mm -hmm. It's but, not blue? It is blue. But, mm -hmm. like, that's all the cosmic nonsense that they do. Right. You know? And if you want to remind people about that beautiful, wonderful cartoon show that everybody enjoys, maybe don't put that team to, in all these adventures where they have to deal with gods and stuff. I don't know. But he mm. had to because that's where it was going. Right. Is Nth Metal still big right now? Only in, in, insofar as it is infused into Kendra Hawkgirl's wings. And so she's on the team. Mm. You know, so it's around. Because she was on the cartoon show. Right. Uh, but also... They discovered that, like, her wings also... So it's not enough that, like, they're made of nth metal and that she's, you know, had a thousand lifetimes and she 
helped facilitate Dark Knight's Metal, the event, mm. and that she was part of Black Hawk Island. No, also, her wings have a pattern on it, and it's like a map, and like they could follow it. Like, <laughs> oh, mm. her wings can do many things, not just allow her to fly, right. though. I don't it's know quite what propels her, uh, <laughs> but she also ha uh, they're made of that, that metal, that special magic metal. Yeah, yeah. It's also and and there's a map on it. Like, I mean, what else about the wings? Uh, oh, oh, and and uh, uh, they could jerk you off, and it's called a <laughs> flap job, and it's great. <laughs> wings are dope. Flap anyway. job. That's amazing. That's. We're gonna, uh, no. I'm you sorry. You just invented that just now? <laughs> flap job? I don't know. That's amazing. Seems like a thing. <laughs> I guarantee you there are people on the internet be like, oh, flap jobs have always been a thing. Excuse yeah. me, I have someone drawing that on DeviantArt right now. <laughs> I have 35 examples. I'm sorry, 35,000 examples. <laughs> I'm sorry. I grossly sorry, that, was, that wasn't even close to the number it would be. So Clark Kent, he has not revealed he's Superman to everybody yet. So oh, it's just, boy. So it's fun. Yeah. Right. So he's at the Daily Planet, he's doing his thing. He can't quite, like, he's just kind of, like, distracted. So mm. he's sitting at his desk, he's looking at his computer, uh, and, and he's thinking about writing an article. Uh, they just had an event called Drowned Earth, which we'll cover on the show one mm. day. He wants to write about that, but he hasn't yet, and he's kind of distracted. And then Batman calls him, and he's like, yo, we gotta meet. So he's like, hey, Perry, I gotta go. And Perry's like, you're not going anywhere, man, you haven't written anything. <laughs> Like, you owe me an article. Like, you haven't done anything. You're not gonna go. Where are you gonna go? Like, what are you talking? You're not, you're not in school. <laughs> uh, can I be excused from work? <laughs> no. You're not gonna get paid. Yeah. You always mutter under your breath, Bruce, and then you shuffle off someplace. Right, exactly. It's bullshit. Not gonna have it. But he goes, no, I'm, I'm just gonna go cover this, like, thing at Wayne Enterprises. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> That's a Gotham problem. <laughs> Bruce Wayne is gonna flex his stupid muscles, and he's gonna do this thing. No, forget it. He goes, I told you, he pads his suits. He's not actually that built. <laughs> and then S Superman does a super sneeze, which blows Perry back into his office so that Superman <laughs> oh can God. super write the article very fast so that when <laughs> Perry comes back, he sees that the article's actually written and then he lets Clark go. Oh, oh, you did your work. Oh, I guess you can go then. Yeah. And he just wrote it in like a second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he like super. broke his keyboard. Superman, yeah. He sneezed Perry into his office and Perry is not confused. Yeah, like, what the hell just happened? Oh my god, I was just blown backwards by your steam. That doesn't make any fucking sense. It shouldn't. It should have been very baffling, and yet, it's just another day at the Daily Planet. So Perry's Superman like, flies oh, off. So clumsy. Also, Mera, Aquaman's wife, is on the team, uh, because Drowned Earth was an Aquaman event, and he's not here right now. Oh. That's I thought I this was know. the team we knew. Yeah, well, also Mera. <laughs> also no Aquaman. Yeah. Well, Aquaman wasn't in the cartoon show much anyway. <laughs> So it doesn't really matter. So he is he's deal he's dealing with like the aftermath of Drowned Earth? Is yeah. that okay? Well it's just it happened. Who's that shit? And Aquaman isn't here. Uh, that's see. Starman. Was what's, Starman on the what's a Star Man? Straight up no. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, it's exactly like the car the cartoon, except exactly not. Right. Except, except different totally in not. very specific very noticeable, very noticeable ways. ways. Yes. Yeah. Starman has been like many different superheroes named Starman because they're really like Generic name. Now yeah. I know who Starman is. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's no, you don't. Movie <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Starman is an '80s movie, and he's also a superhero who was like coincidentally invented in the '80s. Uh, he died in an Eclipso event, and then, but, but Scott didn't remember that. So when he comes back to life at a previous event, he thinks it's the '80s. Oh. It's like a little meta thing. Right. Like, but he, but he died in like ninety, ninety four. <laughs> nah, '80s. <laughs> but fine. he's an '80s character. But Starman is like barely a footnote in this story. Oh. He's he's here. Well, he, get used to even it. Even in this panel, he's standing off like yeah. Well, to that the way edge, when you're not looking at anyone else. Exactly. <laughs> so when you when you're doing your promo art for this, you can just crop him right out. There you go. The whole team. <laughs> so they've, they've they've hatched a scheme. Like they they're like, okay, we've got this plan, we got this idea, but we needed to plot for it, and now they're ready to execute the plan. And they've built a like cage that will hold. An interdimensional being. So it's Mixia Spitlick. It's yeah. the fifth dimensional imp that torments Superman. Yeah. Okay? Every 90 days, he returns and torments Superman. And the only way to go back to the fifth dimension is by saying his name backwards. Uh -huh. So Superman has to trick him into doing it. But of course, he's super, so he does. Okay. Every time. Every yeah. 90 days. Every 90 days. He's tormented by this, by this imp, and he has to do that. You'd think that Mixia Spitlick would, like, 
Just learn. Just stop it. But no, because he's got like infinite time and you know he's eternal and he he, he is kind of assigned, we find out in this retcon, to uh. Superman. But really he's he's Superman villain slash friend. Right. I got a better thing, Superman. Friend I can't enemy. say my name this time because I'm going to cut off my tongue. Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa. It makes you feel like, yeah. whoa. Thanks for that, Jeff Johns. So they're going to trap Mixa Spitlick. Okay. By th- making him think it's been 90 days so that he will appear in the cage. And because it hasn't been 90 days, his power won't be at full strength. Oh, oh I th- how I assumed it? if it hasn't been in 90 days, he's, like, broken the well, he, cardinal rule. He's, he and, has done that, too, but, like... And now uh, he can never come back. No. They're not, like, we're going to solve every, one, every hero on the team's problems together. Like, okay, Batman, this is your month. We're going to work <laughs> together. We're going to put all our heads together. And, we're going to oh, get rid of crime in Gotham. Yep. We're going to put all your villains away. Exactly. Actually away. Right. We're going to blow up Arkham. Has Rich is big, like, whatever, has he been reappearing every 90 days, like, forever? Or is that a more recent thing? It's something that has had been a thing that hadn't in the New 52 uh, and that they're bringing back. Okay. You can call him Mixie, by the way, if you don't want to say all that. Uh, yeah, I really don't want to say all that. So yeah, yeah. Mixie. Okay, and how do they trick him into thinking it's been 90 days? Like, how do they even find him? I don't understand. Jean sends a telepathic signal across dimensions. Says, that, oh, it's been 90 days. It's, it's, says, oh, it's, it's, it's been time. 90 days. You go, where, where are you at, Mitzi? Yeah. It's, it's been 90 days. Watch. Is it? Oh, jeez. Oh, shit. I'm late. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so Mitzi appears. Very good fucking work. Okay. Yeah, so he's, he appears. He's in the bubble. They're like, okay, we've got you. Now listen. Like, we, we, we need to talk to you. And he's like, we can't talk right now because how can you protect your city from me when you're so busy having to protect yourself from your city? And the metropolis becomes a nightmare realm of oh. living cities. Oh. The Daily Planet itself becomes like, the, like the, the planet becomes like a mouth and it like chomps on like a Wayne building. Oh. Perry's like, I just got my papers cleaned up from that giant sneeze. That's right. Now... I no, guess I'm being dead. thrown around by my living building. That's right. Uh, so everyone springs into action, and Mixie, of course, like wrecks everybody. You know, yeah. He, he turns Green Lantern into a clown made of like light bulbs. I don't know <laughs> if this is just Jorge Mena's style, but Mixie is goddamn demonic. He's looking. supposed to look yeah, a little demonic. Like, like when him. he first appeared, he was creepy looking. He got like cuter and refined, especially from the Superman animated series, where he just looks like a Max Fleischer character, but. Over time, people have kind of, like, leaned into the idea that Mixie is, like, scary. Right. Like, the idea of him is Yeah, like the leprechaun. It is scary. (laughs) Uh, But he is supposed to be, like, kind of cute and fun and, like, impish and such. But, yeah, he is supposed to be demonic. Him and his art is off the freaking charts in this book, by the way. Like, there's some awesome-looking shit in here. Uh, And it'll only get more awesome. But anyway. uh, Oh, and he turns the Daily Planet into a giant chain chomp. Yeah. Oh, that's what that reminds me of. I was like, what is that? Yeah. Uh, So the bubble doesn't work. Well, seemingly it does not. Right. Uh, but it turns out that all of the machinations that we're seeing before us are constructs from Mixie's mind. And that actually it did work. Oh. And that it's all just what Mixie is imagining that he is doing. Oh. And that the oh. imprisonment worked. And that Jean is keeping like a cycle in his mind of his name backwards. And he's like, listen, we just want to talk but we can't trust you because you're such a chaotic monster. Right. So we're putting you here, and I'm going to keep this thing going in your head, so the next thing you say will be your name backwards, Mm. unless you agree to our deal. And he does, and they're talking, and he's like, listen, I'm I'm sorry that we trapped you. Like, it's not my style, you know, to do this to you. Right. But we're kind of... You know, we're kind of pressed for time. We're kind of pressed for yeah. time right now, so. Uh, and you are horrible, so. Right. You kind of deserve it. We need your help because, like, you're immortal and other dimensional, and maybe you know what we're up against and how to beat it. Mm. They're talking about Perpetua? Yes. Right. So, okay. you know, we cut to the Legion of Doom, Perpetua's under glass. You know, Lex Luthor's like, everybody look, look at, look at this. Look at this monolith that I've been, like, just just salivating over for the last, like, (laughs) how many volumes is this? This is four. Uh, Three volumes. (laughs) Uh, Even even though she isn't at full power, I have to use all the seven dark energies in order to do that. Because this is is an anime. (laughs) But but under glass, even while she's unpowered, like, planets themselves are forming around her. She's like... Planets? Yeah. Just Inside the glass? Yeah. They're very small planets. They're proto-planets. Right. Yeah. And of course they're annihilated once they open the glass. Anyway, 
So uh, they free Maybe Mixie. Maybe you could give one of those planets to the little... Uh, oh, to the Kandorians. Kandorians. <laughs> <laughs> just, just save one. <laughs> They're dead. Rogel's are broke That's all right. They're all dead. dead. So Mixie's hanging out. They freed him. And he's like, yeah, listen. When you broke the source wall, you fucked up everything. <laughs> Like, hey. It's the freaking source wall. Yeah, it's a source yeah, wall. You can't just break it. It's fine. It yeah. won't be fine. Right. And he, he he explains like all the dimensions. And by the way, there's six chapters in the story, and each chapter has like a narrative device where Snyder explains what each dimension is until we reach the sixth dimension. The, the idea is this is called the sixth dimension. There was not a previously established sixth dimension, but now there is. Yeah, Macy was from the fifth dimension. That's right. But there's a there's a sixth. Dimension. Wait, what are, the, oh. what are the first four dimensions? No, the first dimension is a as Mixie describes it. He says the first dimension is a point, the second is a line, okay. the third oh, yeah. is material, yeah. the fourth is time, and the fifth is imagination. Okay, okay, that's where he comes from. Sure, all right, right. So yes, <laughs> exactly what yeah, you it was, yeah, okay. The the answers you seek lie in the sixth dimension. Okay, and they're like, and the sixth dimension is well. Apparently, the sixth dimension is everything, and he whips out the friggin' multiverse. Oh, God. No! <sighs> we know what's on the other side of that. <laughs> That's right. But he points out the fact that, like, okay, there is a sixth realm that oversees everything. It's like the penthouse that only the top multiversal beings can enter and utilize. And that's where it all Kind of like lies. And Mixie's got a map for it. Well, he's Is got he allowed in? No. <laughs> he's not as powerful as right, he's a, the he's monitor, the uh, the, uh, the anti-monitor, or Perpetua, who are all like multiversal beings that uh, have access to the penthouse of the sixth dimension. Okay. He doesn't have the key card. That's right. Actually, there's three characters outside of Perpetua, her sons, and those sons are the monitor, the anti-monitor, and the world forger. Oh. I'm sorry, the monitor and the anti-monitor are her sons? Yes. As it, that's a retcon. That's, yeah. But yes, uh, as, it, yeah. as it turns out, Perpetua birthed those three children into existence, and their their jobs were kind of like to oversee different aspects of the multiverse, and of course, because Perpetua is like a dark, twisted, unnatural thing, their roles were also equally perverted, and they, of course, had to turn against Perpetua themselves. They're the ones who imprisoned Perpetua in the first place. Oh. Uh, and... It's a very Zeus-like story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about gods and myth and stuff yeah. like that anyway. It's just... And it's new. You know, it's we're, we're making shit up. Right. We're creating mythologies here. Right. And there already was one, so it's... It's gotta get even bigger it's gotta and get more bigger. crazy, more ridiculous. We yeah. got we got bigger, crazier artists now. <laughs> yeah, here was here was all your stuff, but now there's another layer on top. Yes. Of that. Okay. So so Perpetua. Perpetua is the like the maker of, of, of this multiverse. Yes. But you mentioned that there were other multiverses. Yes. Like other. DC universes out right. there, yeah, made by other beings like, like her. her. That's right. But okay. they had to die in order to do that. Yes, but so, she didn't so have to die have in order perpetua. to make our multiverse. No, yeah, and those they're, don't they're because they're not DC universes. Like, yeah, isn't the whole idea of the multiverse that like, okay, the multiverse is everything. Yes. Everything's in the yes. multiverse. Yes, but yes, then yes. it turns out there's no, multi multiverses. Actually, there's multiple multiverses. Yes. So and, then, yeah, and the oh, multiverses are all over there. Right. That's a multiverse over there, and that's a multiverse. No, it's all a multiverse. <laughs> no, no, no. This is everything. Yeah. But it's not everything, because that's also everything. <laughs> yeah, and that's so, even more so everything. That, that, well, that's just also everything. Everything that could ever be fathomed is over there. And here, 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 and here, and here. <laughs> well, this is great, because... There's the, you know, you got the, the monitor and the anti-monitor. and Oh, where did they come from? Well, I'll tell you where they came from. Uh, yep. They came from Perpetua. Yes. Oh, okay, so Perpetua is the one thing above everything. No, 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 no actually, no. because there were multiple Perpetuas yes. that, you know, well, a like... a race of Perpetuas. A race of Perpetuas. And then it's like, oh, well, where did those per things come from? Uh -huh. So we'll get that in, like, three years. And there you go. Then yeah. it'll all be about, like, fighting that fucking thing with that... people from the other multi yes. fucking person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and because, because it never ruins a story to constantly up the ante. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, the, so he's like, you got to go to the, you got to go to the sixth dimension. That might have what you need in order to stop something as powerful as Perpetua. How, how can you get there? Oh, he well, can't even get there. I can't get there, and neither can most of you. But there is one among you who could absolutely go 
It's Starman. <laughs> yeah, and he is the linchpin to this thing. It is not. He, oh, is, he is so useless, it's like they regretted in introducing him in the book. Um, he has to stay and guard the base. That's his job. <laughs> Even Marshall Manor's like, ooh, oh, sucks man. for you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it really sucks, though. Send him to Detroit. <laughs> no, it's Superman. Yeah. Well, oh, no shit! <laughs> yeah. I... D- I don't understand. Why is Superman able to like do everything? Okay. He is a Kryptonian. Yes. They're just a race of people. There's a whole lot of them. Yes. Why is Superman well, yeah, able there's, to go there... like into the realm of the fucking gods? Okay. Well, first of all, because he's Superman. Like because Superman is because <laughs> that only works for Earth. Metatextually, he's super... Superman for Earth. Yes. For the galaxy yeah, and no. the universe, he's, he's just, just another Superman. But for us as readers, like Superman, he's the first. He will be the last. Like, he is the Alpha and the Omega of the superhero yeah, in comic books. Yeah. He is important. He inspires. He is... He is yeah, that's like in, like... Indomitable. A metatextual sense. Yes. But, like, I in mean, this, in the logic of oh, the Mixie universe. says that over every encounter he's had, he infuses fifth dimensional energy into Superman so that he can be powerful enough to do this. Oh, that's why he's been doing this the whole time? Yep. You see, I'm really just a helpful little guy. Yes. I've been, I've been leading you to this. Everything has been leading no, to this No, I'm calling shenanigans because Mitzi can't even get to the sixth dimension himself. Right. But he can give someone else the power to do it. Right. Someone who only has, like, pieces of his power. Yes. Superman doesn't even have as much power as him. Yeah. But, remember, and this is another retcon that Mitzi reveals, mm. Superman and Batman are more or less totemic examples of their universe, and as such, the sixth dimensional beings, or at the very least, like, the over-gods have determined that Superman and Batman deserve fifth dimensional beings to watch over them. There are two fifth dimensional or other dimensional. Mixie is officially from the fifth dimension. Batmite is nebulously from Oh my from that. god. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking Batmite. But Batmite is basically Mixie's yeah. bit like for Batman. Yeah. yeah, that sucks. <laughs> but th- there's a reason why there's only Mixie and Batmite. And it's because of the machinations of the structure of the multiverse. Like, I see. So the multiverse wants Batman and Superman to get to the sixth dimension. Yeah, or at the very least, like, some... will give them a leg up. So in order to be a totemic thing in this universe, you have to have a penis. Sorry, Wonder Woman. <laughs> and Batman's like, hold on a minute. Wait, you get to go and I don't? No. The Batman is happy not to go. He, in fact, brings it up where he's like, this is stupid. This doesn't make any goddamn <laughs> sense. That. He's like, this is, this is insane. Clark, don't go there. Wait. This, this is really weird and stupid. Yeah, like, whoa, 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 whoa. You just dropped a lot of nonsense on me. Yeah. And I don't think we should just do what this friggin' I don't guy think we should. Even his yeah. face is, like, screaming in rage, like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. We just found out there's a sixth dimension, and they're going to open a doorway, and all of you can go through. Like, come on, Clark. <laughs> this is, this is way, this is, this is beyond my pay grade, and I'm a bazillionaire. And not only that, but, like, it's Mixie. It's probably a trap. Right, and it mm. isn't. I mean, it kind of is, but it isn't. Like, with Mixie, it always is both a trap and not a trap. Mm. Well, you understand, I've been helping you this whole time. Every time we've been battling, yeah. I've just been, I've been here for you, buddy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he has. And in fact, Superman's resurrection and subsequent, like, retconning to get rid of New 52 Superman is because of Mixie. Right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. But anyway, you know, basically Batman's revealing, I'm scared. Mm. Like I'm wearing right. a bat, I'm a rich person with issues in a bat costume, right. and we're talking about going into like other dimensions to to talk to, to to punch God. Yeah. So Superman just puts his hand on Bruce's shoulder. And he's like, "Yes, it's bigger than us, but you and I can handle it. Come on." And Batman's like, "You are more stubborn than me, and I don't pad my suits." So Superman goes to the door, and he's like, "Okay." And he just right before he goes to the door, he looks over his shoulder. He gives a reassuring smile to everybody. He goes, "It's gonna be okay." And he goes to the door, door closes, and they're like, okay. All right. That was weird. How long do we have to wait for him to come back? Right. Like, what's going to happen? And... Yeah, do they just hang out? Yeah, they just wait for a second. And then a second later, a Superman that is decades older in a rad new suit emerges. And he's like, sorry I was gone for so long. Let's go. Okay. I don't trust this at all. (laughs) (laughs) Not even a little. (laughs) So Batman says... No, it's says, me, truly! So Batman goes, okay, Jean. And Jean's no. like, I'm scanning his mind. It's him. Hmm. And Flash like, sweet, let's go! Sweet, I want to be old! <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, no. Only Superman's old because he was there that long. Yeah. He's like, but I've made it safe so we can all go. Like, let's go. And Batman's like, go? 
Go where? What? We're no, not going. Yeah, we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta protect the universe, man. You gotta come with me. And uh, and and Mera and Starman are like, well, we'll stay behind while the rest of you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, this seems like Justice League work, and uh, we're, we're not really do part of that. it. Yeah. Yeah. So the team goes. They go through the doorway, and I love it because this is one of those Stanley Jack Kirby. They drew one thing, they say another situations <laughs> because the description is. The experience of going through dimensions is not like traveling. Like one minute you're here and the next you're someplace else. But they are very visibly traveling right now. Right. Like they're blasting through. So which is it? So which is it here? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, well anyway. I can't just show you them being there. That's not a yeah, fun panel. Yeah, that would panel. be friggin' boring. Right. So they arrive and they're at the Hall of Justice, clearly in the future, and they are faced with their counterparts. And Batman's like, what is this? Wait, they're already what? there? Yeah. Well, it's because another version of the is it sixth dimensional future version of the, I don't understand. No, it's that Superman entered the sixth dimension and then he brings them through the doorway to take them essentially to the future. Okay. Like, look, we've won. We did it. Like this is after the war. Oh. The inevitable war. I thought you were going to take us to the sixth dimension. No. No, no, we just used it as a way to get here. Yeah. Now, we didn't need access to the sixth dimension to go forward in time. Yeah, no. Flash we do, do that, that all the time. That's true. Speed Force could do that or whatever. Yeah. So, they're here. And Kendra's okay. like, my wings can also do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I have to flap you off while we go. <laughs> so, while we're in this utopian future where everybody's happy, uh, we're also in this dark nightmare dimension. And that's where Superman is. Ah, That's where okay. Superman ended up when he went through the friggin' doorway. Right. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. And he trips over a mountain, and he lands in the ground, and he's, he's shrouded in darkness. I love the color palette for this. Mm. Uh, and so he, he heats up his eyes to create right, to, to vision, create light. to light the way, and he sees that he is surrounded by corpses of Superman. Oh. This isn't the first time a Superman fell for this trick. Oh. That's funny. <laughs> These are multiversal Superman? Yeah. Oh man, how great would it be if like all of these supermen died because there's no light, there's no sun. <laughs> yeah, right, they eventually did. Eventually they run out of energy. There is no yeah. sun. And so he already feels his energy depleting. Yeah. What? Superman's stuck on like this little What happens when he like <sighs> And their their flag, like the world flag, is now the totality completed, where it's like both justice and doom to be create this like full true vision. Um, and they've, t they've defeated Doom and they've succeeded. And, and they, everybody meets their counterparts, you know, like Jean and Kendra meet future Jean and Kendra who are both married and have a son named Shane. And was, he has wings. He was a winged Martian. Oh. That's fun. Yep. Is it? <laughs> and they each have their, their role to play. You know, like Wonder Woman in this future created a universal language for everybody. Like, that isn't just limited to Earth. Like, all races, all creeds, every, like, Like species. Esperanto? Yeah, like Esperanto. <laughs> Only oh. effective. No, it's uh, Bill and Ted's music. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. It unites the planets. Anyway. Everybody goes in a line. Okay. Uh, but we also meet up with, like, Barry and, uh, and John Stewart, and the two of them work on... So, John became a White Lantern? Yeah. It looks like. Okay. Okay. Right? Barry exists in, like, at least three different dimensions at the same time. They don't explain any of it. They don't tell you right. like, the origins of the... It's just kind of like, whoa! Right. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah. Batman's got a red bat on his chest. Yeah. So, like Thomas Wayne. Right. So this door well, that they opened... Terry. Oh, yes. Superman like went through it. Mm hmm And ended up someplace else. Yes. Yeah. But the door is also open to this old Superman? Well, well this old Superman trapped our Superman in a nightmare moon... And then swung the door in another direction. Yeah. He controls what's on the other side of the door. Yeah. But he basically says, like, okay, so what happened was there was a big war. Lex did his thing. Perpetua was, Perpetua was going to be, you know, released. And we, and, and we won. Like, <laughs> and then we, we had a big fight. Uh, yada, yada, and yada. We, and, and we, we won the it. war and we succeeded. But right. it, took, it took a lot of work. Right. And it not was, everybody it was, made it. It was real hard. Yeah. Who didn't make it? Batman. We just saw Batman. Yeah, we saw a Batman. Oh, I was going to say, he looked kind of young. Yeah, he did. Oh, okay. Bruce is kind of, like, vulnerable. 
and you know we we indicated that at the beginning where he's like, hey, listen, like this is scary and big and and weird. Right. And then he sees like Superman's older and re more reassured, and like he sees this like utopian future, and he's like, this is cool. Mm. So he's like willing to hear Superman out. Like, right. all right, all right, this is nice. Right. Where's Gotham? Oh, we see. Oh, Gotham. we eradicated Gotham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, on Earth, <laughs> things are things are getting kind of weird. Uh, we have this fun vision of a Gotham where Batman is chasing after Deathstroke, and then Jaro, which is a Starro that Batman recovered and raised in a jar, uh, <laughs> who has a personality like a twelve-year-old boy. Uh, who sees Batman as his father, uh, sees himself as a future Robin, and so Jaro springs into action and defeats Deathstroke. That's awesome. And, uh, we, Wouldn't it be like Robbo or something? Yeah. <laughs> Jaro defeats Deathstroke, and he goes, more like death joke, am I right? And Batman goes, ha, 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 ha. That's why you're my favorite Robin ever. <laughs> I am not kidding. My favorite Robin. This guy right, right here. Right there. The Damien. Robbo. <laughs> Jaro the Robin. <laughs> And uh, Mera and Starman are trying to wake him up. They're like, hey, Jara, wake up. <laughs> he's like, what? I was awake. And they're like, listen, like, Mix is bit like is freaking out. Like, uh -huh. he's got he's got all this energy swirled around him. He hasn't, oh. he hasn't been talking to what, us. What are, we, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. Jaro. We, we Jaro, were supposed to have us. him trapped, yeah. but he wasn't trapped. Mm -hmm. And now he's out. Yep. All right. So we see that, you know, uh, like, um, Black Hawk Island was converted into, like, a spaceport. It's like a launching pad for ships to go and come across the galaxy yeah um you know so earth is like some kind of like hub of sure galactic of, of, activity exactly we're not yeah. hosting an intergalactic kager we are as you can see how, <laughs> how how great everything is uh you know oh we're married isn't it great we had a kid uh it's great and they see that there's a mars colony ship with martians on it like we figured it out and we've we've repopulated like mars has martians on it now Every, everything you've ever wanted. Everybody gets. I thought all what the Martians wanted. died. Yeah, they did. But well, like, we brought them back. Well, we found, we found Martians. That's like, much better one. than like we fucked a lot. We fucked yeah, all a the, lot. Yeah, a mm -hmm. lot. Like a lot, lot. I mean, there's no way they didn't. <laughs> yeah, but then they don't. All, not all the Martians have wings. Right? Yeah, so, no. Like, it wasn't and, and, just... and it would also be like really like gross because they'd all be related. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. Barry and John reveal to Barry and John that their job is they are repopulating the multiverse. What does that mean? I don't know. They are creating worlds, and they're doing the thing that Reed Richards and his family do at the end of Secret Wars, which is they are literally creating worlds oh. and throwing them out into the multiverse. Oh, because John is a white, white lantern. lantern. He creates life. Yeah, exactly. John Stewart is an architect. It's like, this is the, this is the best thing you could possibly build. You know, it's like you're putting your, your skills to work and you're creating worlds that like have peace and love and happiness on them like we're making we're not making like nightmare batman vampire universes here <laughs> like <laughs> we're creating worlds where like everyone's happy but like right. it's it's still occupying the space where multiverse we're, we're, we're multiversal earths every once in a while right. though we do create a bad earth and we have to send it to a place called the dragon and the forge <laughs> they don't talk about the dragon but definitely that happened <laughs> But yeah, you know, they're just like, everything's better and we're friends. Woo, isn't it great? Isn't it suspiciously great? Yeah. I'm like, what the? Okay, so what are we doing here? Superman You're just here wanted to, to show see how great it is. Well, he's like, I, well, basically, Superman's going to shortcut it. He's right. like, listen, oh. like, I'm going to show you how it turns out. You're going to make some hard decisions, and I'm going to tell you what those decisions are, but I want to give you like 24 hours to see how good it gets. Oh, did, did uh, your counterpart do that for you, and that's how you won? No. Oh, no. well, then aren't you kind of fucking it up by showing us all this? Like, isn't it nah. not going to happen the same way? Nah, no, not, it'll be nah. fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, is it, are you taking a big risk, changing, possibly changing the timeline? Nah, because I'm not even Superman. Right, yeah. So, no, I mean, this is fucking real. I'm making oh, this God. all up. <laughs> no, it's real. Oh. Oh, it's real, baby. Yeah, okay. Is this their future, though? It can be. Oh. <laughs> so, we're on Gotham. Oh. Yep. What? Look, it's all clean. Yeah. Batman asks Batman, like, what do you think? And oh, Batman's there's just like, a giant Batman statue. That's yeah. how all the crime is solved. That's right. <laughs> you know... It looks like fucking Metropolis. Honestly, <laughs> like, I feel like a lesser author would have Batman hate it and try to destroy it. You know, uh -huh. like, where's the grime? But I feel... But I really like this Batman because this is a vulnerable Batman who's like... who Who's just letting it in. Right. And he's like, oh, oh. it's so good. 
This is what I wanted to see. Mm. I, it's I happening. I do want this. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was impossible, though. Yeah. So this is weird. So Dick reveals he's Batman now. Oh. And he's like, you die in the war. Oh. But look at what you bring us. And, like, no eight-year-old boy ever has to lose his parents ever again, man. Like, I know you expected to fight forever and you thought you were undiable, but definitely you are. Right. But you're just a freaking guy. You're a guy. That's, that's what Batman does. He dies. <laughs> Okay. So Batman's like, where are all the villains? Like, what, what is this? This place is teeming with villains. Like, what'd you do with them all? We find <laughs> oh, out. we have a final solution. Oh, we have a place for that. <laughs> they don't have a final solution. <laughs> Martian Manager and Kendra are hanging out. They're just kind of like, this is amazing. It's breathtaking. And then Shane's like, it's all fucked up! Uh-oh. I can feel them in, their, in my mind! And they're like, oh, okay. Uh, all right, what happened? I'll show you! He, like, goes into their minds and tells them the, the, the sad... Sick, true could, reality. Could it just be words? Could you just tell us words? No, no look at what I've seen. I have to show you. And they're like, oh. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, Starman and Mara kind of lose control of the situation. And uh, Mixie just loses it. And he's just like, I've got this. So he, he, he explodes out of the Hall of Justice. And he just like runs amok. Okay. And, uh, and there's no Superman to stop him. And there's no Superman to say his name backwards. No, he's wrecking everything. And I'll say, it's not necessarily Mixie's decision to do this. Mm. So Mixie's wrecking everything, and he's just, he's just, he's, he's overpowered, and he's unfettered, and he is on a tear. Okay. And Lex Luthor's like, watching it all happen, and Brainiac's with him, because Lex hasn't betrayed him yet. And, uh, <laughs> Brainiac's like, uh... Dude? <laughs> yeah, and Lex's like, I got it, I got this. And he takes out a box, and the box has Batmite's logo on it. And you're like, oh. oh. Like, I'm going to fight fire with fire. <laughs> so, yeah, that usually works. <laughs> yeah, this time it does. Uh, kind of. So Superman, you know, he's just trying to, yeah, to break get... free of this atmosphere. Okay. And, and, and go out, get back to where he needs to be. Okay, he's, just, he's going up. He's trying to go up. He's trying to go up. Yeah. And each time he jumps and, you know, it doesn't work. And he lands. Right. And then the fake Superman arrives. And he's like, okay. Like, you, you, you've you experienced the futility of your situation, now we can talk. <laughs> Superman just wails on him. He's like, you know, who are you? Explain this. And he goes, okay, listen. Stop. And I'm he, not like, a problem you can punch your way out. No, of. Simmer down, man. Yeah, he holds up a finger, it stops Superman's fist, and he's uh -huh. just like, I, I've had this conversation with you like a thousand times. And <laughs> every time you keep going at it. Yep. Mm. There is like a garden on the other side for him to like stay there. He's like, I'm not going to kill you. What about all these corpses of Superman? They they kill themselves because they refuse to give up. Uh, oh, because they were Superman. Yeah, right. yeah. But you're prime Superman. Right. Maybe so, you'll give up. So, maybe well, just maybe you'll listen to me. Enjoy the garden. Right. <laughs> but I love it because he says, if you if you do make the leap, you will die in the cold vacuum of space. I promise you. And Superman says. Even if you trap me here, and he goes, for a hundred years, I'll reach the universe and stop you. You've said it a thousand times. I've heard, I know what you're going to say, because you've said it all, enough. Don't worry about it. Stay here. So we go to Arkham, which has now been changed to the Pennyworth home. It's a place of healing. Oh. Batman drops the cowl. He's like, I'm dead. I'm just going to enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Hey, look, it's Bruce Wayne. He's alive again. Uh, I'm not here. For, I'm, I'm just visiting. But, uh... He, Do people know that this is like... Yeah. Okay. Oh, what? Like weird? No. This place is McDonald's. Oh, they're they're Because <laughs> they're in. loving it. <laughs> oh. I'm so on board. I have bought right. this hook, line, yeah, and sinker. This, this, this tracks. This tracks. This, I love it. Not, nothing weird well, about no, this. Just, I've always wanted this. This is everything I've ever wanted to see. I love it. Yeah. And it's not like Batman's like, and that's why there's no way! Right. Well, he should be. I know. But he's got his like most loved ones right. there. And they're very yeah. convincing. Yeah. And Batman's like, okay, I'm in. And then he gets a psychic call from Jean. They bring up the psychic boardroom, so everyone's yeah. there. And he's like, what? What is this? What do you want? Stop <laughs> it! I'm connected with my son! Yeah. And, uh, it's and, like, I'm, and, I'm sorry. You just bought in. Yeah. You were just I'm, accepting it. But and I'm going to pull the rug out. i got to pull the rug out from under you, man. Listen, it's all Don't messed lie. up. This is, we're not supposed to do this. This future is... This future is is built on a pile of corpses. There's no way we can earn, we can keep this. Oh. And they're like, okay, like, I don't know if you, I don't know if you had the same tour as we did, but like, this is pretty awesome. All I'm saying is, you see, Arco. Eventually, place. people are going to die anyway. Yeah. So maybe a pile of corpses ain't that bad. Right. Like, how how many corpses are we talking here? I mean, <laughs> but then they're all trapped by crackling energy, which is also coincidentally the energy that is uh, around Mixie on Earth. You mean uh, purple? Yeah, purple, that's right. 
and uh, the, the future Superman arrives. He's like, all right. Yeah. All right, you just talk to the Superman. Right. And he's just Who like, told listen. You? Like, and they're like, all right, where's Superman? Wait, this like, is an actual meeting? I thought they no, were No, it's a psychic a, meeting. It's a psychic meeting. He, he showed can, up at their psychic he meeting. He just shows up. <laughs> he's like, what? Yeah. That's how powerful yeah, I am. I can yeah. be here. Yeah. That's right, I'm in your minds. <laughs> <laughs> I pants all of you. <laughs> Plus, like, I'm physically here in your mind. That's right. I start punching your brain. I can punch your brain. Start ripping neurons out and shit. Yeah. But he's just like, listen, we got to work together, man. Perpetua's too powerful. It's not going to work. And they're like, tell us who you really are. And he reveals himself to be the world forger. He oh. The three and he's like, this world that I, cr- I'm the world forger. I make worlds. I forge them. This is make my- Make for breakfast. That's what I do. And I made this one. This world you're in, it, it is real. Oh, I so, made it. The same so, way I made your world. Like, I made this one. And he made the dimension or the pocket dimension for Superman to be trapped in. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so you made this one. This isn't a future of anything. No. This is crafted from, from, from nothing. nothing. I mean, yes. yes, but I also made this to be a potential future for you. Yeah, it right. Is, Everyone made... remembers what it was like when it was your world. Yes. So it's like it could happen. Exactly. And World Fortress plan is diabolically complicated. Okay. But he's like, I'm on your side, guys. Like, I don't like Perpetua. I helped put her in the source wall in the first place. Right. You know, I get it. Listen, Dark Knight's Metal is pretty rad. But <laughs> you did break the source wall. And you got to answer it. It is your it. fault. So now you got to uh, work with me. So What's happening? <laughs> oh. Getting meta. That's what's happening. Yeah, it's. I love this page. So the idea is that Mixie's just going nuts. And what he's doing is he's unimagining existence itself. And as such... The world is being, like, undrawn. Oh. We get to see the pencil yeah. that ma- that wrote this page. Yep. Interesting. And the, the underlying blue line pages of the, of the comic book itself. That's cool. Yeah. And this is part of World Fortress Plan. Ah. Well, I gotta unmake your shitty world first. Yeah. And somehow that'll help. Well, yeah. Well... What about because all the other Perpetua Earths? Is part is he of doing their that world? to those two? Well, Perpetua. Well, no, it has nothing really to do with it. The idea here is the World Forger knows that they're not going to win. Mm. Because we talked about how we kind of did it out of sequence, but the World Forger's like, we lose. Like, Doom wins. He, uh, he switched the buttons so that everyone tries to pick Justice, but <laughs> yeah. they're actually picking Doom. Okay, no, he doesn't. Right. No, but he people doesn't. Just pick it. What happens is. After the source wall is broken and the multiverse is kind of being like fucked up, yeah. the Justice League decides on their own not to tell everybody that that's what's happening. Because they, they figure they can solve the problem before it becomes one for everyone else. Like for right. every Tom, Dick, and Harry living amongst the Earth. Right. Which is a fair point. And they keep talking about how like, well, we're, we're about justice and truth, but we kept this big truth from, the, from humanity. And I'm like, I want that truth kept from me. <laughs> What you're good the, is it do me to know it's, uh, right? about these things you're I the can't control? You're the good people. If you keep that from me and you make yeah. the right choice. You're a hero. Cool. Yeah, if we, and, and if you made that choice and we still lose, you're still a hero. Because if I'm going to get blinked out of existence, I, I want it to happen in a blink. I don't want to get blinked out of existence after months of agonizing over whether I'm going to be blinked out of existence. Okay, but, everyone has to pick Doom or Justice. What? And that's no! World Forger <laughs> wants to tip the scales. He wants to fix the election. Ah. So what, he gets rid of everyone who would vote for Doom? Yes. He's like, here's what we're going to do. So here, here's what World Forger's scheme is. He's like, okay, I have Mixie on your Earth, unimagining it. Right. So it's going to be like stripped down to its basic elements. I'm going to take this world I forged. We're going to overlay it. Onto your world. Onto your world. See, where will become your world. Yeah. And, well, so here's the thing. It's going to overlay your world. Everyone that exists in my world and has a counterpart on yours will be merged. So it's like they don't even die. Everyone who did die or is omitted because they would have... Because the thing is, when, when humanity decides to choose either justice or doom, it's not like... It is decided by the judges of the universe. Oh, so they're just judging us. It's not like we get a say. It's well, like our actions that have, de- well, that we, have determined we, it. Well, we vote in our minds, our hearts, and the judges see that, and they make a decision based on that. Okay. 
Yeah, but isn't it just like a numerical? Like, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, which number is bigger? Like, why do you need judges to? Well, because the judges determine what to do next with uh, that information. With that, okay, okay. So, what the World Forger's plan is is we're going to take everybody who would have voted for Doom out. We're going to <laughs> skip ahead to when the judges would have favored us for choosing justice. And so when the judges come, we'll have already voted for justice, and anybody who would have still will be there, and because the judges are like gazillions of years old, they probably won't notice if a few decades have gone by. Because this is the future. Uh huh. It's a future reality. This is complicated. It's not that complicated. Why does it have to be the future? I don't quite. I don't understand well, the future part. Because w because everything, anybody who might potentially vote for Doom sees the end result, and so would inevitably vote for justice. Oh. Everybody who exists in the justice future has voted for justice, and would because they live in the end result of voting for it. Okay. Despite the countless lives lost and the bloody war that followed. Because right. there is no war, you see, that happened already. Right, we're just going to skip past I created past the world that. where it already happened. Yes, so we're going to skip past that. We're going right. to dodge it. Right. So you don't have to have the bloody war, it already happened. Yes. I just have to unmake your reality. Yeah, right. and, and supplant it with this one. Yeah, and this better one. It's objectively better. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people died, but it's really like they don't exist anymore. Right, but they definitely but they, do, though. But they would have died right. in the war oh, anyway, yeah. oh, so it's not oh, really yeah. a loss. No, it's Except true. that it's a war that they would have died well, in. And I need them to be gone, because if they're there, then they can vote. They'll mess up the vote. They'll fuck up the vote, and we can't have that. And listen to me, you self-righteous action figures. <laughs> I need you to be on board because it's the end of everything otherwise. Right. Like everything, like, not your world, not vampire planet, everything. Right. Wait, but like this multiverse everything? Or that yes, multiverse everything? All of it. So, like it's all so fucked. Our Earth, their Earth mm -hmm. decides, Earth Prime, Earth Prime mm -hmm. and human beings decide for everyone. Right, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. They're not voting on like other, they're not, like it's, New Genesis doesn't get a vote. Not, and, no. Okay. <laughs> Presumably. Wow. I mean, in that I mean, case, Mars I gotta. Vote. I kind of gotta right. go with, with this. What's his face? The World Forger. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of right. I know. You have a responsibility. Uh, that, I know. It's a complicated issue. Yeah. And okay. the league is like, no. Right. That's no, insane. You can't do we that. can't do that. I, I would. I would never vote to do that. And Batman's like, I would. <laughs> like, what, what, what are you? What are you saying? All I'm saying is, this is pretty dope. Yeah. Look at Gotham. Right. It's clean. It, yeah, there's no garbage. It's worth it. It's what I always wanted. Countless millions must die. Trillions. Batman keeps pointing out, like, listen, I don't know if you've read the last, like, three volumes of Justice League, but, like, every adventure we have, we lose. Like, we keep losing. Like, every time we gain a little traction, we take two steps back. Right. Like, it's not working. And this is, the like, the forger of worlds <laughs> is offering us an out. I say we take it. It's a pretty decent out. Right. Like, like, what's your plan? Yeah, what's your plan afterwards? They're like, we're going to hope. And he's like, that's not enough. That's, right. What does that even mean? It's not who, a plan. Who even invited the child? You don't even, you're not even supposed to be here. <laughs> you're not even freaking real. You're not even freaking real. Well, I would be if I was to play your world. So what, is, what about that? <laughs> yeah, well, you haven't yet, so you don't get a vote. Yeah. You stupid winged creature. You <laughs> winged baby. But, uh, you know, but they're what, like. you're going to hope you're going to sing a song that, like, ends the war? Yeah, please. So uh, the World Forge was like, just, all right, like, let me, let me, let me, just go ahead, make your, make your call. This uh, is the World Forger. Yeah. He's powerful enough to trap Superman. Can't he just be like, well, then you don't get a fucking vote. I'm doing it anyway. Well, yeah, I don't he, understand why it, he needs them. Because they're the, like, they're the Justice League. They're the representatives of the Earth. They, they inspire humanity to do it in the first place. So he needs them on board. But right. He like, made a Justice League that is already the people that are on board yep. for it. Can he just put those people on our earth? But they're, well, they, they, yeah, will, they, they will supplant them, but he, like they also have an internal logic attached to them. Like They needed right. to have made those decisions 
Right. They did. Well, yeah, he, but those did. Yeah, he has to merge them with existing people. Yes. So, like, these guys got to get merged. And if they don't voluntarily merge, maybe it doesn't work right. Right. Like, they won't become yeah. this, the version. It's, like, they have to accept the whole thing. It's, yes. Yeah. That, is, that is true. It's interesting. That so is. Superman doesn't. Oh, no. I'm sorry. There is no Superman is no because Superman. the World Forger is Superman. Yeah. yeah. Right. Never mind. Uh, but World Forger's like, whatever you choose, I'll go with. Because I got to. And then they, and then of course, like they, we don't see their dialogue, but like we know what they choose. And he's like, "You will regret this." <laughs> <laughs> so then he teleports them away to Apocalypse, where everybody who voted for Doom and all the villains are. Uh, Apocalypse itself has been turned into a prison planet. Huh. These are the people who voted for Doom, or would have voted would have for voted for Doom. Okay, and so because they're not physically on Earth, their vote doesn't count, even though they're still alive. Right. Okay. I, they, I, I, just asking they the question. They can't send an absentee ballot. Here's the thing. <laughs> These are the people, yeah, because, and it had to have been because, like, there are millions who die in the war. Mm. So there are a bunch of people who die anyway. Right, okay. But these are people who take off the board. Now, maybe because it's Apocalypse, Apocalypse is outside of the multiverse because it is oh, like New Genesis. So right, maybe right. Maybe we had to shunt That's them right. over there and they won't go there. Because, I mean, like, listen, if you got judged in the multiverse, why haven't they ever judged Apocalypse at any point? Like, what the fuck? Mm. <laughs> but that's just my internal logic. It's uh, not we're actually... getting there. It's in, in the queue. It's not in there. Yeah, yeah. right. It's... But, uh, so they, they arrive, the Justice League. Okay. And uh, they are met with a security force that's like, you are going to screw everything up. I was there when you guys screwed that up. You and Superman and everybody, forget it. And it's the warden, Lois Lane. Oh. And she looks freaking cool. <laughs> She I mean, it's cool. an awesome spacesuit. Yep. She remembers that they didn't... Well, she came from that world. Like, she lived a few decades. So, like, she's... She's on Apocalypse to keep that peace? Yes. Okay. She's She's not only on board for the World Forger's plan, but she comes from that reality, that or that world that the World Forger made, where all of that happened. It's not just like, yes, we are at the few decades future, but... On their world, all that stuff happened. And so Lois remembers, like, that the Justice League, like, voted not to do the things they're oh, doing. Oh, okay. So, we're, so it's not quite as utopian as all that. Right, okay. So, this seems like a future you can't escape from, like... Well, no, it is because it is still a future where people voted for justice. It's just that, like, they wouldn't have if they had listened to the Justice League. But because then, the how is there a Justice League in that future? Because because the ju- because somebody changes their minds. Ah, okay. Because the so Justice she's League. like, I remember when you chose not to do this, even though ultimately you did do it. Yes. But I'm mad that originally you said no. Well, and I know that you're not on board. And I know right. who you are. You're the younger versions of yourselves, and you're definitely gonna fuck this up for me. <laughs> I see. Okay. So I know you got to go back to where you're coming from, and you mm. got to make that choice. So we got a couple of like fun flashbacks where, um, Superman. Clark is teaching John, his son, how to start a fire without using his heat vision. <laughs> oh. And he won't let him do it. Why would he need to do that? Because one must learn how to do things properly before you learn the shortcut. Because his, Boy Scouts. <laughs> yes. And his father also taught him how to do that. Mm. Like, because John Kent thought that Clark should know how to do that, so Clark thinks that John Kent should know how to do that. They're okay. called matches, son. Put that stick away. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's teaching him how to do it, and it helps, like, inspire him, and he... Couldn't he do it with his super speed and be like, ah. Yes. Yeah, but what no, he's, he's doing said. is he's drilling through the thing. He's not doing it properly. Ah. And he musters some strength, and he shatters the moon to blast off of it to send ah. himself hurling through space. Does okay. he uh, suck the life out of the garden to help fuel himself? He does not! <laughs> Which would have been really cool, <laughs> because there is an dope. homage to that, because... It doesn't go well for him in the cold vacuum of space with no sun, and so he does start to wither away like he does in Dark Knight Returns. So, like, it'd be kind of cool if he does, like, go, I, need a re- I, need, I need a quick charge. <laughs> and just, yeah, that would be really cool. No, he does not do that. Dang it. Why right. are there um, multiple Supermen on that planet? Like, Right, because the World Forger, I guess, tried it on other Earths before the Prime but Earth. But what does it matter? Right. Because yeah, they're not, they're not they're, they don't count. Right. Maybe he didn't try it. Maybe he's just like, look, I had to create a planet with a whole lot of bodies, so you think it's futile? That could right. be. Oh. Oh, that'd be okay. 
so the Justice League's there. They get arrested uh, by Lois and her uh, her second lieutenant, Jimmy Olsen, who is super cool looking. <laughs> Why is he old? Because it's been okay, decades. Everyone's old. Yeah. Lois isn't. Yes, she is. Don't yeah, you see just... like the grime on her face? And one of them goes, hey, wait a minute, where, where the hell's Batman? So the World Forger's like, thank you, Batman, for voting for me. Like, for being on my team. Right. You, see, you, you see what I'm saying. You, you, you get it. See, and now that your other team is gone, you have the sole vote, and you can vote justice. Right. It's, it, it, they got a plan. So he's like, okay, listen. Like, you need to... I can't do these things. Like, I'm the World Forger. I play a role. This is why the Just League has to make these decisions and go through these motions. Because, like, it's Earth. You're being judged. I'm not being judged. Right. Like, if it were up to me, obviously, we'd be fine. But, like, it's not. It's up to you and humanity. Right. So All like, I can do is, like, tip the scales. Yeah. I can't actually vote. Right. But I can cheat. Right. <laughs> so Batman's like, okay, well, listen. Like, what do I need to do here? And he's like, oh, I'll tell you what you need to do. <laughs> um, meanwhile, the battle between Batmite and Mixie is still, like, raging on. Like, mm. Batmite's keeping Mixie from unmaking reality, or unimagining reality. Right. But it's not working right. It's just it's just wrecking everything. It's just becoming this nightmare for all of humanity watching these two cartoon characters punch each other. Right. So, and, like, make themselves turn into bones. Mera and Starman <laughs> are just, like, sitting in the Hall of Justice just being like, we fucked up. Yeah. We did not... I mean, listen, like, we... I don't know what I was supposed to do. We, we sought out to guard the base, Sam. And it has been done... We've guarded it. Uh, but everything outside... But the base is safe. The base is safe. Oh, no, they do. When they come back, they're like, hey, what happened? We, like, we locked the door. <laughs> the World Fortress pulls up. Because you know, everything is like, controlled through like, like beautiful filigree magical technology. Uh -huh, so, like, yeah. you know, like things that... Like, the moving of stars themselves is done through like a holographic image projector. Sure. Oh, well, it's all computers. But, yeah. uh, but he says, like, you're the leader. Your job is to lead. That's what you're going to do for me. And he goes, what are we going to do about Superman? And he's like, okay. So, like, when I copied Superman, like, when I made myself into Superman, like, I have, like, an imprintment of Superman. He's the prime Superman. So, like, when we overlap that world, his essence will be imbued into me, and I'll be your Superman. He, he'll, he won't be, like, Superman. He'll be me, but Superman will be inside of me. But I'll still be the world forger. Yeah. But we are definitely going to kill your Some friend. piece of him will, will imprint print onto, onto me. me. And yeah. I'll, I'll be able to turn into him once in a while and like hang out with you and answer questions the way he would. You know, like that's kind of the, 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 the limit of Superman's resurrection. You'll but have he, a fake friend. He will not be around. Right. He, and he has no role in my future. <laughs> Batman right. is hard pass. <laughs> he is like, no. Because he's like, listen, like, I put him on this moon. Right now he's hurtling through space. There's these suns that are in this universe that I've created, which he could reach. He can't reach them, but because he's the prime Superman, there's always a chance that he could reach them. Right. Your job, because I can't make that decision, is to move them out of the way. Your job is to kill Superman. It's to let him go. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I can create a scenario where he can from die. which it is... Almost impossible for him to escape. Yes. But, but only you can make it one. truly impossible. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Right. And he goes, and listen, like most of the ends of the earth are the result of you two fighting anyway. So <laughs> all I'm saying is, is like, you have, you're already on board. Mm -hmm. You just have to kill your friend. Yes. Right. Just take one more step. And just... you're not even like really killing him. Like you're killing him, but like his essence, everything that he is will be in me. So still a good deal. I still want. <laughs> I still want Batman to be like, "How are you not the bad guy?" Right. Yeah. That's, because that's I make evil. worlds. Because I forged your parents. You, you're and forcing me to make an impossible yeah. decision, though. This seems like a supervillain move. It is supervillain move. This is so a listen, supervillain move. But I'm beyond that. You're the supervillain. <laughs> but that's even worse. Like, see, like Batman moves him and he's like, "Whoa." Oh. It's messed up, Batman. <laughs> you are. Okay, now when I imprint your reality, you are getting erased because that is wrong. I did yeah. not think you were going to do that. Holy crap. You have been judged. <laughs> so uh, so the Justice League's trapped, uh, and there's like a psychic shield that keeps them from being able to escape, but Shane is there. Oh, good. We have telepaths. No. Yeah. Uh, Martian Manhunter is not enough? No. We have to have no. his kid. Yeah, he's super powerful and stuff. Yeah, because but... he's the product of Martian Manhunter and... And Hawker. I don't Hawker. know if you know this, but when you have a child... <laughs> when you have a child, yeah, it changes everything. Suddenly, they are the key to the world. It's because yes. he's got those wings. It's the the wings 
Do wings make him strong enough? Yep. Is there That's a map on his wings have. too? No. This new map? He, he doesn't last follow. long enough for us to see the map. Uh, uh, but listen, like, uh, they, they need him to, like, have, like, a psychic scream. Uh, a psychic surgeon. freak out. Yeah, a psychic freak out of emotion. A, a psychic scream. <laughs> <laughs> that breaks the barrier, and so they make him like you know they're like you you can be happy, joy, laughter, hate, whatever. And because Shane came was was born from a world of death and fire, he like remembers and feels all of like the screams of the damned, all the people who like would have chosen doom, but then when they are instead chosen for slaughter or exile, they are like. If maybe you'd given us a chance, maybe we wouldn't have. Like, there's, right. it's not like cut and cut and dry. It's not black and white. Mm. But the betrayal they felt is in Shane, and Shane excises it into a big surge uh, that frees not just Just League, but all the villains mm. that were kept under lock and key. The Just League is to fight them on Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like like Two Face and Mongol <laughs> and the Parasite and Clayface and Giganta and stuff like that. And they're all old and crazy looking. But uh, they are picked up by a big, awesome spaceship Sweet. that is piloted by the Legion of Doom, the survivors of this utopian world, uh. which make which is literally the Legion of Doom from this run. Right. But not all of them. You know. So it's the like, Legion of Doom is like you either take over the world or you live long enough to become the heroes of it. That's right, that's right. So you got Sinestro, Cheetah, Grodd, and the pilot, uh, who we'll get into in a second. Okay. But, the uh, pilot? Yeah. The pilot reveals who he is. Oh, okay, like, so it's actually... Who's, who's piloting the ship? <laughs> Could it be and the then, ship? And Darkseid says, Darkseid is. Uh... <laughs> God damn it. Nice use of Darkseid is, though. I know, I know. It's pretty funny. That's fun. Who is ready for lunch? Darkseid is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Batman, like, he's faced with this choice, and he's like, and, and it's cool because, like, this is like this this is the World Forger who didn't matter because he wasn't he wasn't in existence like like four volumes ago. Yeah, he uh, he was just made. He was just made. Yeah. But like, we're talking about like the we're no, talking about he's the, always been. He's always been. But like, we're talking about the the multiverse. Talking about like the Prime Universe. We're talking about like the the Batman Prime. This is a big deal. This should be the event because Batman like is faced with this choice. Like, you got to kill Superman. The Superman. Right. And your friend. And Batman's like... You've had to do this before in, in other weird things. Yeah, yeah. And Batman's like, my whole life has been leading to this decision. Like, everything that I am is up to this point. Because we, we're trying to save creation. Everyone. Right. Like, so I am, like, de facto, like, the, the making this choice. This is a big deal. And so Batman makes the, you know, he, he uses the, the machine... And he says, I'm sorry, Clark. There's a lot I wanted to tell you. But there's no time. He moves the suns? He moves the suns. Wow. I did not see that. Because Damn. Superman is rocketing towards that sun. He's like, I got it. I'm going to get out. Nope. Nope. <laughs> mom, mom. No. Nope. Okay. So Superman has this memory of a perfect day with his son. They had a great day. It's a real thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> But, you know, like, it's not like he's imagining it. Right, like, the World right. Forger made it for him. <laughs> like, it's just, you know, he had a perfect day. He played catch. He's, he stopped some crime. They had a good day. Uh, Lois wasn't there, but he calls her and they talk. And uh, Lois wasn't there, but it's all right. Yeah, well, Lois is like, oh, you had a perfect day and I wasn't there. And he's like, you're always there. You're, you're there in every breath and every thought I have and blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, I was at work, which is my perfect day. So, <laughs> but John is crying and Clark's like, why? And he's like, because, like, we were supposed to, like, there's a tradition they created where they like light a lantern that like they send up into the sky uh, in memory of Clark's father, mm. and like we're supposed to do it for my namesake. And they built this little like paper rocket that looks like the rocket that Superman came in. Oh, is it like? Is this something that they do all the time? It's something that we're, we're retconning that they do. Okay. Uh, but like it's in it's in memoriam. It's something that John has grown up doing. It's something they ah. do for 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 Grandpa. Right. And it's raining, and they can't do it. And mm. Clark promised they would. It's like, so I can stop the rain. And, and, and this is clearly Snyder rewriting a thing that actually happened to him. Because, like, mm. if you're just reading it as, like, a 20-year-old and you're, like... Because Superman feels like he failed. And he's, like, standing in the rain and the rocket is falling apart in the rain. And he just feels like a failure because he made his son a promise and he couldn't, he couldn't deliver. 
Right. And I'm like, who the fuck cares? (laughs) And I'm like, oh, right. Because you're a father and you probably made that choice. And the feeling of having like let down your son despite a perfect day is so insurmountable that you feel like a failure. Like, I get it. I get it. I get that. But also, that's Superman. You can stop the rain, man. (laughs) Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen and their space forces are attacking the Legion of Doom spaceship. And uh, they're like, we got to get you back to your Earth so you can make your choice because this place sucks and you got to stop them. Apocalypse, or uh, Darkseid is like, you got to free my planet, man. Right. Yeah. This I, sucks. Get all these stupid Earth villains out of here. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, they, they, you know, they, they put them in the torpedo bay and they fire them into a, into a portal that sends them back to Earth. Oh. Uh, it's pretty cool. Okay. Um, so back to our Earth? No. Oh. No, because no, be the... they're still in their universe. Okay. Like they're so in the World Forge universe. Back to the, where the World Forge is standing. Exactly. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. You can't just like overlay a reality. You got to do a certain set of things in order to, in order to make that happen. Uh, it, does he have to make Batman now do them? Be like, all right, you've already killed your friend. Now kill everybody else on this <laughs> earth. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Uh, th- well, the World Forger has a job and Batman has a job. The World Forger needs the... Earth Prime to be stripped down, you know, to its unimagined elements. Yeah. And that's what uh, Batmite and Mixy Spitlick are doing. Which, well, Mixy Spitlick's really doing it. Yeah, Batmite Batmite's is trying to, trying to stop, stop him, him from doing yeah. it. But, you know, it's still wrecking everything. Like, things are being unmade, and those that are not being unmade are being broken because Batmite's fighting him. Okay. So, the World Forger need, And once that happens, then... Then, the Crisis Anvil will be forged. And... I'm the, sorry, you said Crisis Anvil? Yeah, yeah. Well, because he needs the World Forger's hammer to be lit by the crisis energy that is being generated. And once he slams the hammer onto the anvil, that will make the move, that, that will like trigger the, the recreation and the, and the dissension of, the, of, of this world onto the prime reality. He's going to drop the hammer. He's going to drop the hammer. <laughs> uh-huh. He's like, the hammer's almost lit! I'm almost lit! And each time like we get like we turn the page, like, oh the hammer creation, it's almost lit. Good. It's going! It's going, it's gonna drop, you gotta do it! Come on, here we go! So this is the this is the world forger. This is the guy who makes the worlds and then the the same this is the anvil, the same one mm-hmm. where the dragon eats the worlds that aren't supposed to be created. Like, I'm just trying to make sh- connect yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. This is the same it anvil. Is the same anvil. Okay. Same, yeah, I think it's the same. Okay. I think you're. I think you're absolutely right. Thank All you for right. reminding me. All right. So uh, you know, Batman's like, so what's next? And you know, the World Forge is like, you got to go into the throne room, and they go into the throne room, and he's like, before you died, in this reality, yeah. right? You built one final bat suit. And that bat suit is tethered to this seat, which is built from element X, which can see into the hearts of men, and then your bat suit can change them. See, the Just League never chose to make everybody go oh. over there, but Batman did, and he built his element X bat suit to change the hearts of the League. So he, like, changed their minds for them. So when the League comes back, Batman has to change the minds of his friends, and that will facilitate all of this from happening. Because the thing right. is, if we, if we bring those Leaguers, like, we're replacing the reality that they came from. We're overlaying it with this reality. Right. That has to have happened. Right. They gotta be the ones they who gotta be the ones who make those the ones who you who just make met. that choice. Exactly. Yeah. So Batman has to be the one to have made that choice and make them make that choice. Okay. Or they get erased. That's right. Well, well or, 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 or none of happen. this could happen. Yeah. Because they're integral to this reality coming into being. So if you can't get them on board by changing their minds, yeah. none of this will work. Exactly. Yeah. So the League arrives and uh, the World Forger, you know, unleashes his League to fight this League. And, uh, and then Batman emerges from the Hall of Justice wearing the final Evangelion. I mean, Batman suit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what? We can't see that. So, okay. Yeah. Holy shit, yeah. Well, I thought he was. Drawn. I thought he was just gonna like you, you think and make their minds change. He's got to like no, punch I have to them. punch it into them. <laughs> He's got to punch them and, and and wrap them up and stuff. And, and, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is your mind changed yet? How about yeah. now? Yeah. How about now? Yeah. Well, I mean, the World Forge is all about hammering. You've got to hammer it anyone. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, we see that scene where like John teaches Clark how to do it. Oh, how to make a fire. And it's so yeah. cute because like it's it parallels it like. 
John gets frustrated and he uses heat vision and Clark uses his super breath to blow out the, the fire. <laughs> and in this case, uh, Clark gets frustrated and he uses his heat vision and John just pours his coffee on it. Huh. He's like, now nah, it's wet. Now nah. it's not going to work, yeah. period. Yeah. And, uh, and, That's going to be even harder. Yeah, and Clark's like, this is stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Why would we do this? Right. Why would I never, why would I, when would I ever not have my heat vision right. to set a fire? And he's like, it's not about like needing to set a fire. It's about putting yourself in the place of humans. Like, imagine mm. for a second that you're a caveman and you need fire. Or imagine yourself, and he's like, so you want me to picture myself as a caveman? He's like, you need to... You, if that helps. He's like, yes. <laughs> imagine you're a caveman, but like everyone in between. Like, all of, all of people. You know, like, be everyone in that circumstance where they need this. Right. Well, then uh -huh. I would just use my heat vision. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so Clark <laughs> thinks back and that reminds him of the memory of when he failed to give his son a perfect day. Uh -huh. But the end of that day, which was he's standing in the dark, in the rain, the rocket's falling apart, and then he remembers that the League came and they all had lanterns and Green Lantern created like a bubble over them to block the rain. That like his friends came. Well, that's sweet. Yeah. So the League is fighting each other. Are they going to save him in space? They are not going to save him in space. So, uh, you know, Batman's wrapping everybody up in these crazy ass like tendrils that are going to change their minds and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Is and it like, like a weird lasso of mind control? Right? Yeah. No, 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 no. That'd be interesting. That'd be a cool, like, no, it's in the, the circuitry or our lassos of truth from across the multiverse. But anyway. Uh, it's, yeah, he, it's my truth. I want you to see my truth. Exactly. Mm. But he's like, listen to me, everybody. And they're like, no, we're not listening to you, asshole. You no, betrayed listen, us. Just let me grab you. He's like, no, listen to me. No, you've lost your way. He's like, no, no, no you idiots. Shut up. <laughs> Will you stop for a freaking second? Yeah. I'm on your side. I'm Batman, right. I gotta change your mind. Yeah. Come Obviously, on. Obviously, come on. But he doesn't say that. He's like, right. I, but he, and he, and his speech is more or less like still indicating he's he's a turncoat where he's like, oh, I'm, I've been a detective. My job is to see things. It's cold hard facts. My job is to like recognize like when something's gonna go wrong or when something's gonna go right. And like Superman muses to himself like, why did I remember this terrible day? Like this nice day that was that ended in disappointment. <laughs> I'm like. It was the best day ever. It was a great day. Yeah, it was a perfect day with us. But it was I a terrible failed. Day. But I failed. Like it's that's the, worst. the thing. It, it, it soured. Why did I remember that? And it's like maybe because you know that like even the most beautiful and perfect day can end with darkness. And it's like no wait, but it didn't because my friends <laughs> but it were didn't there. even end in darkness. Yeah, because it was but that's great. not the lesson. And it's like but the lesson was that it's I can't that, believe like, I forgot for a second that that's how that day ended. I know. <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> well, because narratively, you needed to think despair for the next right. chapter. It's not. Uh, but, like, it's that he remembered it. That, that memory was triggered so that he would be inspired to have faith in his friends, including Batman, mm -hmm. and find the little bit of hope left in himself to keep pushing to find those sons that Batman left for him. Ah, uh, Even right. though, I, like, I, it looked like he took them away, but he, did. he couldn't have but completely But I moved them just away. a little out of his way, his but thing. he could still reach them. And, and Fortress like, Batman, what the fuck, man? And Batman's like, I did. Like, I moved them out of his way. Yeah. So he would die in space. But I have faith in him. If he could reach this sun, he put them in a direction where he would blast through all of them and ultra charge himself, which indeed he does. And so <laughs> he chains these suns uh -huh. and he is so invigorated by them. He just, he just... <laughs> it's like a multi-ball. Yeah, he has a multi-ball of power that is just blasting towards the earth. Uh-huh. And the World Forger is like, what the fuck? Like, what is that vibration I'm feeling? And he sees this thing and like, you know, the Justice League sees the truth and they see the, like, the, the reality and the, and the possibility and, you know, Clark sees them and all that the World Forger sees is a fist. <laughs> <laughs> but the image of Superman like, raising his fist up to strike a Superman pose, but also punch the shit out of World Forger uh -huh. is compounded by John's lesson about like, think of yourself as like the caveman, as like the, the next person of humanity. And so Clark is like infused with the memory and the like the, the, the power of the past, the present, and the future of himself, his father, and his son. Oh, it's like so the last episode of Star Trek uh, TNG. And then all three of the Enterprises oh, yeah, from the all... future and the past and the present come into the fucking yeah. temporal yeah, but, anomaly. But that literally happened and this is more figurative. <laughs> right, right. More, well, I could see them. They're all, all three of them are on the page. Yeah, because there. it's art. 
<laughs> but uh, as the World Forager is about to strike the Crisis Anvil, uh, he is punched in the face. No, no, my <laughs> hammer, my blue ball's hammer! Yeah. So, nice. uh, so he wrecks everything. Yeah. Does and he's he break like, the anvil so and the hammer? He, he, Looks well, like he blows up the entire world. What, what, he does what not. He, does, he, he blasts the, the, the hammer and the anvil. Oh, okay. And he's like, you fucked up everything. <laughs> You were the greatest villain in existence, Superman. Congratulations. Uh, and he's you're like, destroy the multiverse. Right. And he's like, maybe. But may he's like, when the judges come, they're, they're, we're going to lose. It's like 51% asshole over there. <laughs> Have you seen your planet? Have you right. been to Earth Sucks. lately? And, so, and, and, and he's like, why, Batman? Why did you trick me? <laughs> why could you have done that? And he's like, no, I, I have faith in him. Like, I did what you asked. Like, I did it. Yeah. And you Superman, saw me. I moved the sun. I moved him, and it would have killed him if Superman couldn't do it. Yeah, but, but he uh, could. And that turns out proves was... that, like, the impossible can be possible. And so uh, he goes, like, listen, we, you counted on us losing in every eventuality except for this one. Join the Justice League. Be part of us. <laughs> the, they're asking the like, World Forger to join the Justice League. Yes. No, screw off. <laughs> and the World Forger was like, I can't go to your Earth because I'm made of special, like, because my, my energies and my it atoms. It doesn't work are, that way. It doesn't work that way. Why Perpetua is there. Right, and he goes, yeah, right. and, and they're like, and he goes, I can't go. My cells are different. And they're like, you're the World Forger. Can't you just change them? And he's like, oh, fine. Let me hammer myself. Yeah. What? So he does. So now World Forger's on the team? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> Okay. Uh, what is he? Can you imagine they're fighting Gorilla Grodd? He's like, I got this. I'll create another Earth where he loses. <laughs> you gotta stop, uh, okay. man. Okay, Forger, that's not all really. These Earths. Yeah. It's not really how we do things in the Justice League. Listen, you wanted me on the team, so uh, so it's like power. they have the friggin' monitor on the Justice League, mm -hmm. or the like a being as powerful as the monitor or oh, the monitor. They'll do that too. Oh god. Okay. So, uh, I mean, the, why not? The Legion of Doom has the freaking Perpetual. Well, they do have well, Perpetual. She's, she's in a jar. She's in a jar, but she's there. She is there. She is there. She's physically standing yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, they arrive on Earth, and everything's fucked. Like, everything's gross oh, and ruined. Oh, no. And they're like, what? And uh, so they go in the Hall of Justice. Well, because Batmite was fighting yeah. Mitzi. And Do they go and it's uh, all pencils? Well, they're like, <laughs> they were gone for like a week. Oh. Why don't they just come back right after they left? Because it doesn't work that way. So when they because arrived, time. Lex told all of humanity the truth about the totality and about the Justice League and about Perpetua and about the judges and about how Earth is going to be, like, judged. And he's like, choose Doom. It's way better. Why well, choose Justice? They lied to you. Also, I'm dissolving LexCorp and I'm taking all my money and I'm giving it to everybody. You can all have my money. You, but you have to pick Doom. Yep. And they're like, okay. And uh, so all of humanity like turns on itself. Like there are riots and like it's just it's a disaster. Oh, yeah, but you're all rich. Uh oh. Yeah, you got money and shit. And so, uh, and how much is your net worth? Right. What, like, like like a gazillion dollars. All right. Everyone so gets like six hundred bucks. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did this for six hundred dollars. Well, for most of the planet, that would be a lot shit. of money. <laughs> so the last thing that Lex Luthor does after he did all that, after he went on TV, and was like, well, "Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> everything sucks, and so do you." Vote dude. Uh, he goes into his tower and he like... Oh, sold. Yeah, Boom. done. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So he, he told me the truth. I suck. He gets into LexCorp tower and then blows it up and dies. What? He kills himself in his own tower. And they're like, oh, uh, what? Yeah. Oh. And then uh, everyone's like, that's messed up. Well, that, was, that was weird. But he actually emerges from like a, like a, like a, like a, like a egg... Like a chamber that he built. Oh, like a Lady Gaga egg. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that, but but this is so that he could be the apex Lex that he needs to be to become the avatar for Perpetua. Like he needs to be something more. Oh, he's got to be better than Lex. Yes, but uh, but in public he killed himself. You know, so like humanity's like, oh, he's a martyr. Oh, he killed himself for his beliefs. Well, also because yeah, for doom. <laughs> because when Lex saw the future, like Lex was dead. But Doom ruled, and the future was his. And his whole thing was, I want to see that. Like, I want to be there and enjoy it. So, like, he needs to die in order for that future to come about. Okay. So he does. So, so he, he like, okay. copied himself? Yeah. I mean, and, listen, we've seen that before. <laughs> what, I, what I'm disappointed in is he doesn't have, like, shoulder-length red hair and an Australian <laughs> accent. <laughs> no, I've, I've gone that route. Doesn't work. Yeah, no. it doesn't work. He loses the hair. So... So that's that, the end. And that's the end. Is that like it just, it, it, we're getting closer to and death metal. Everything's getting worse. Yep. Every, that's every the issue, end? everything gets worse. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there's the, the end of the story is. There's a little Wolf more. Forger joins the team 
and the world chooses doom. Well, well it hasn't chosen. It's it set up chosen, to choose doom. It's choosing. set up to fail, yeah. yes. It's, it's closer it to choosing doom than ever before. Right, and, and it's going to. I'm not going to do any more Justice League before we do Death Metal. So, like, yes. Spoilers. They choose doom. Perpetua fires Lex. Replace him with the Batman who laughs. And I swear to God, you know that's editorial. <laughs> that was like, Lex? But he isn't an awesome action figure. How about the Batman who laughs, though? Guys, yeah, let's bring him back. We can sell that. We can sell that with two figures. There's two different McFarlane Batman Who Laughs action figures. Well, then how do they win? Isn't well, that the, the end? Oh, well, the it? Earth is raised and perpetual rules, and the, oh. the the Earth is a nightmare realm that is that like is like it was in like it was in in, in Dark Knight's Metal. In Dark Knight's exactly Metal. like that. But well, how know, do we get there? We have to have Doom. Yeah. In order to have Dark Knight's Metal. That's right. Uh, death metal. Death, death metal. metal. Yeah, death metal. So, uh, uh, but then of course they undo it somehow. Of course. Right. Yeah. <laughs> With more metal. Yes. Well, th there's less metal in this one. Okay. Well, that's good. Which is good. It's a little more straightforward, and yet not because there's, I think, like uh, 400 tie-ins. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that a real number, or you just feels like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you. I think I did the math on like an episode off the rack where it's like I had to. You had to spend like a hundred dollars to read the whole story of <sighs> Death Metal oh. at once. Yeah. Or you could just buy the trade. Yeah, for like forty or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Which like, damn it. But like, this was cool. Like, yeah, that, this story that was a fun I really story. enjoyed. It, yeah. it has like it's it has metaphysics and it has like grounded stuff. It has like the the true core moral story is about like family and friendship and <laughs> like, that's the real truth. You know, gods are so far removed they don't get it. They don't get the nuance. Yeah. It's a story about family. At the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. And like, you know, you got you got fun callbacks and 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 alternate reality versions of yourselves. And like, they get a lot of really fun stuff in there. And like, the stakes have never been higher. Right. And the problem with that is that you got to make them higher after that. And like, each stake gets higher in Snyder's Run. Like, yeah. the, the, there's a there's a story called No Justice, and that's like, oh my God, there's multiversal trees and, ah, and those things. You got to, uh, and like, it's, it's like, ah, uh, what? And then and then you get the totality, and the totality that well, that means everything. And then the sixth mansion, that's even higher than that. And then, uh, and, you know how you never how you gonna drop the base at some point? Right. What if I never drop the base? Don't, I just, I just have six minutes just keep long building where the base never drops, and then it just it just we run out of tape. <laughs> That's that's where we are. Yep. Okay. But I really enjoy this. So if, if yeah. you were like, I'm interested in, in Scott Snyder's Just Like Run, this is the one to read. It requires no backstory outside of like, you know, there's a fucking god. But like, yeah, this just trade, accept that Perpetua is a this thing. This trade explains it. Yeah, they yeah. talk about it. There's extra stuff by Francis Manifold, which is beautiful art also. But like, Jorge Jimenez is the, just the, holy shit. Like, it's next yeah, level it's stuff. Great. It's awesome looking. So cool looking. And it really leans into that anime influence, mm. which, like, you know, I heard Snyder was into anime around that time, so yeah. But it's fun, so it's uh, it's in the comments below. Pick up a copy. You're really gonna like it, I think. Uh, if you like DC, you're gonna love it, and uh, if if you like multiversal crap, you're you're still gonna enjoy it. Uh, okay. It's and everybody keeps their dignity. No one's like an asshole moron, right. so like, it's okay. In a way, Batman kind of is. Right, but kind he, of. Well, he's like. I mean, like, you saw my heart. You knew I believed you were right. But I all, but you didn't account for my trust in my friend. Well, not only right. that, but, like, I trust my friend. Yeah. I believe in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could be wrong. That's right. Well, I gave it, I left it up to him. Like, I, well, I, I left it to him. I, I basically got to have it both ways. Because, like, <laughs> like, you were telling me that, like, I had to, like, kill Superman yeah. by moving the suns away. And so I was like, well, I'm basically going to, like, 99% kill him. Yep. But if somehow he survives, yep. then I'm going to have a way for him to, like, get out of it. Yes. So it's like, and, and have it my me. cake. Yeah. And, and you need it, too. Well, because he's, like, I'm going to... <laughs> he's fighting the Justice League. Like, he's, like, wrapping him up in the things. Like, he's yeah. like, listen, guys, no, no, no. Yeah. If Superman shows up, I'm totally not going to betray you. It's okay. <laughs> I left a tiny, minuscule probability that he might show up. And, and if then, he does, then I wanted to do this. And if he does, we're always right. been on your but team. But if not, though, yeah, I need you guys to get on board. No, that I was right, and I need to change your mind. But, like, listen, if he is right, he is right. Like, if Superman is not powerful enough <laughs> to do that, then... Then this, this World Forger guy knows what's up. Yeah, and he does. But, like, listen, he's right. The world the chooses The World Forger doom. was right, that's The true. world is annihilated. Death Metal sucks. And it happens! And it happens! It does happen. And you had to read it!
but they do undo so, it, so he's not right. So when and Superman, they, but they undo it, and you're like, oh, like where it ends up, it's like you had no plan. Yeah. Then yeah, there's no path, even yeah. though there's a map on wings. True. So uh, when Batman is moving the the suns away, yeah. I thought it was like a button where he like swiped. No, he's like. Doo-doo-doo. Yeah, it's just like. It's like my order. Right, I'm just gonna. Yep. Yeah. Well, what are you? Why, why are you putting them in that order? Uh, yeah. Why don't you just move them like all the way away? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. You could use there's a delete key on that. You could just get rid of them. Yeah, you don't uh, need to leave them. I moved them away. No. I did what you asked. Oh, I want to give him a little bit of hope. No, you can't so give him hope. He'll not use that hope. He's Superman yeah. for fuck's sake. He's no, being a no, right no, no, Superman. No. No, he, he runs on two things: hope I know, and, you, and I know, solar energy. I know real well. He won't be able to. He won't be able to reach those things. They're too You know far. what? There, there's a memory I know he's going to draw on. He's only to remember the bad part of it. <laughs> Until, no, no, he'll only remember the. No, bad I'm part. pretty sure he'll only remember for like a, good, a, a whole a whole issue. I feel like that's not true. I feel like he's going to. Is there more? Is there more to that memory? No, I mean there isn't until I mean. the next issue. <laughs> Then there's more to that memory. Okay. But we haven't gotten there yet. I'm yeah. just gonna go ahead and do it. I'm pretty sure he won't. Ah! Uh, <laughs> just, just shit. Well, all that, that ruined everything. All That's right, okay. well, I'll, uh, I'll just whip up some more suns. Uh, can you make me lunch or something? Because I need to. Uh, I'm peckish. hungry. Yeah. Uh, my frail human body real yeah. requires sustenance. Yes, and you need to make it with your yeah. hammer. Yeah, forge me a sandwich. <laughs> so, forge me the most delicious of sandwiches while well, I, I mess with the computer. <laughs> so let me ask you this: If World Forger hadn't tricked them into going into the sixth dimension, right? Would Lex have like taken over and crap? And right? Would the world have voted for Doom? Because Lex uses the epic impish battle mm, right. to like scare people into believing that the Justice League is a bunch of failures. Right. So because uh, because Mara and Starman couldn't stop this, couldn't yep. stop Mitzi Plitnik <laughs> from yep turning the world into pencil art. Did. Did World Forger control Mitzvah Splitnik? Yes. And make him do all that? Yes. Okay. Yes, right. Mitzvah Splitnik was and what World ha- Forger's agent. And wh- what happened at the end of that fight between Batmite and Mitzvah Splitnik? Oh, the place was wrecked. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, they were both... Uh, they they were they 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 lost. I I assume because Superman defeated World Forger, his connection to Mixus Spitlick was severed. Oh. Because when Lex Luthor reveals his nefarious scheme to the world, Mixus Spitlick is unconscious, but like beneath him. Ah, okay. So he has been defeated. Yes. And we don't okay. see that happens. Oh, on the I see it. Yeah. Because Mixie is not, I think, acting on his own accord. Right. So once that connection to World Forger is severed, he's just like. Yeah, passes out. Right. What about or, Batmite? Well, Batmite wins. Well, uh, I guess. Lex was controlling slash manipulating him anyway, so he probably just put him away. Yeah. Okay. Well, go back in your box, Batmite. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Batmite. Thank you. Thank you, Batmite. But I haven't had my adventure. I, I haven't interacted Batmite. with Batman yet. Exactly. Batmite. Get in your box. Get in your box. <laughs> Get in your crate. Go to your crate. Crate, Batmite. Crate. You'll be, you'll be able to calm down when you're in there. <laughs> That's your space. I'll chill you out. That's your space. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, he's, he mentions. loves his screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he it looks he like a prison that's only like no, a tenth no, he, of the He size. loves it in there. He's safe in there. He loves it in there. <laughs> they crave structure. Fifth dimensional imps. This is what we need. <laughs> that's why we created a cage for Mixie Spitlight. That's right. Yeah. Anyway. Sixth dimension. Check it out. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. Wait, did we answer what the sixth dimension was? Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, it's... 25 minutes ago. Right. No, but it was like, so you had... It's just, point, it, it's just oh, yeah. oh yeah, no, matter, it's just, it's matter, just time, time, creation. creation.